Selma Cruz. I'm a visual artist. I'm a sculptor working with clay and mostly um, in clay which gets cast into bronze on many occasions. I'm a printmaker, a drawer, a painter, basically a creator. Advice from a Caterpillar is a part of a sequence of exhibitions called the Alice Sequence. And basically what the Alice Sequence does, it uh, looks at the animal-human interface, the animal question, through the meta-metaphor of Alice in Wonderland. And the reason I use Alice in Wonderland is because in Alice in Wonderland the whole world is inverted and the animals are the ones who have the knowledge and who control the world and Alice, as the exemplar of the human race, is the one confused and she doesn't know who she is or even what she is or what size she is. And Advice from a Caterpillar is based on her meeting with the lugubrious caterpillar sitting on a mushroom who gave her spurious advice which wasn't very helpful in the end. I've always been interested in it and um, I'm doing my doctorate at the moment to, to look at that interface because it's, it's a huge area of study at the moment because uh, we as humankind have come to realize that we are in an apocalyptic meltdown environmentally and we've got to reconnect with nature and nature of this course involves animals and um, we've always controlled the animals we on top of the Cartesian pile as it were and now we've got to look at our relationship and be more cooperative speciesism is the lost ism in, in a way you know there was racism and feminism and other speciesism we've got to give species due, due respect and due accord the baboons um, I've, I've always been interested in primates. I studied um, primates when I was at Fitz in the 60s. I studied bush babies and vervet monkeys. But coming to the Cape, of course, I got more and more interested in the baboon and human interface here. And I call it the baboon wars because, of course, you know, there's an enormous um, conflict between the resources for baboons and the resources for humans. So the baboons kind of emerged, my baboon sculptures emerged out of that. I don't want to anthropomorphize baboons, I don't consciously anthropomorphize them at all, but um, what happens is that the sculptures allow people to see human characteristics in the baboons, the empathy, that's what I'm saying, they don't actually see human characteristics, but they can empathize with the emotional condition of the baboons, and that is really what simply I aim for. Out, it's worked out over, over, over many years. I think I was the first person in South Africa to make life-size um, figures in, in clay and it, it, it was just a, a trial and error, trial and error process and in, in fact it's quite simple because I build the forms up hollow as one would do a vessel in, in a way and it's a, it's a question of just patience and working. Thinking like a CAT scanner, as it were, you think in slices instead of on surface. I, I've tried to make things solid, but it doesn't work. I can only think hollow. Well, the very next show is going to be at the Clay Museum at the Rist and Freire Gallery in Durbanville, and it's called The Red Queen to Play. And of course, it alludes to Alice in Wonderland again. The Red Queen was the villain. She was the one off with her head at the whole time. So the Red Queen to Play um, has a number of figures that reference chess pieces. Um, there are going to be some, oh, I don't know what one would call them, some cavernous um, vitrines actually, large vitrines containing armless um, doll-like baby forms which are all piled in on top of each other and um, a number of animal heads which I've working title is called the recent dead but I'm not quite sure yet
doing pretty well. Um, I was at the Tate Modern just a few weeks ago and I saw Little Lobos work there and I, th I think we've done well. South African artists do do well worldwide. I think we've still got things to say with the seriousness and um, more. As an established artist, I'd love to be there myself. Um, I think it's excellent, the print magazine, but it has to be supported in this day and age. You know, we print is always a, a little bit on, on the edge, as it were, where its future is going to go. It's got to redefine itself, and probably the print is is more for the critical uh, an, an analysis, you know, the more in-depth analysis, because, you know, one can read it more seriously than on a screen, but news and breaking news and events and promotions, probably the digital media, well, they are more suitable for that.